Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you talk about your beliefs, there's a good chance you're going to be in a heated discussion with somebody. And it is it is kind of a crazy world when, when it comes to our beliefs. Uh, when when somebody says, do you believe in God? I, I always, well, I always say, yeah, I believe in God. Well, what do you know about God? I don't really know anything, you know? Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, I believe what, what he said. I believe what he taught. Um, but I, I don't know anything. I don't, I don't really know. It's, it's a belief. And, and the more I think about it, like, like, I don't even know if I believe, I mean, I don't even know if I know some of the things we're taught about history that have nothing to do with religion, you know, about Benjamin Franklin with the, with the kite, with the key. And, you know, <laughs> all you can do is say, I believe it. You know, you were taught this, so you believe certain things. So um, just this past Saturday, we were at an event and... Uh, the, the mayor was there, and the mayor was asking us if he could come on the show to talk to us about um, some Holocaust program that he's uh, mm-hmm. participating in. Yep. And and he brought up the Sound of Music, and it, it never occurred to me that the Sound of Music was actually um, a Holocaust movie. You know, it's it's a movie about you know how people were being thrown into the, to their deaths just right. because of what they believed. Uh, and and we see this all the time. There was a story this morning. This is just this morning a story about a boy uh, in um, I guess under ISIS control who had who'd been beheaded because he didn't show up for morning prayers. Mm-hmm. They cut his head off. My we, God. we we believe we believe some crazy things, and uh, and I don't I don't know why we are so sure that we're so sure. So when uh, I heard about this book, I thought you know this is really right up my alley because I've always said you know you believe you can ask somebody do you believe this no I know that do you, do you believe yes. this no I know it how do you know it do you, is there a heaven yes how do you know exactly you only believe it Rabbi Ben came and is on the phone we're going to talk about his book called I don't know what to believe and uh, somewhere here I have some notes on Rabbi Ben came here they say he holds a doctor of divinity degree from Hebrew Uni- Union College He's a scholar on the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the founder of Reconciliation, the Synagogue Without Walls. He is uh, an award-winning author. The book we're talking about, again, I Don't Know What to Believe, Making Spiritual Peace with Your Religion. Rabbi Ben Kamen, good morning, sir. And good morning to you. Where are you? to be on your program. Where are you calling from? uh, San Diego. Oh, nice. You got up early. Thank you for getting up early to be with us. No, it's fine. It's not that early, and uh, we're about to have some rain, so the whole city is coming to a standstill because we never get rain. And even though we need it, people uh, get very concerned, uh, to freak out. So, so uh, when we're children, we go to Sunday school or, or synagogue, and, and we come out, and we, we, we I don't know what we're taught about the other religions, but you know what you're taught about your own. And so you yeah. go, you go back to your own neighborhood, and, and you get, and I was brought up as a Lutheran kid, so Christian, in other words. And I'd have my Jewish friends, and I would say, you don't believe in Jesus? My teacher said, you don't believe in Jesus. And he goes, no, we don't believe in Jesus. And I said, okay, well, let's play anyway. And it, it, didn't, it, it didn't really get in the way. It, it mm-hmm. was just like, oh, okay, well, that's what they teach you. They teach us something different. Yeah. yeah. And, and even within the religion, I mean, within Christianity, you have Catholics, and, and it, it, there's so many different things. Even in Jewish, right? You have Orthodox and non-Orthodox. Well, I mean, the, the old joke is if you, if you have... Uh Four Jewish people having an argument, you're going to have six, six outcomes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no question about that. So, so but that's you, exactly the point. You, suppo- is that supposed to happen? That's part of where we're going, maybe, in terms of what this book is about. This book, I don't know what to believe. We are supposed to argue with history, argue with faith, argue with God. And that's not what we're hearing in church or in Sunday school. We're, we're, we're told we're hearing you need to obey. And that's not, that's not really that helpful. And I always, I always think that, that God wouldn't make us... I, I was I always ask this question: Why did God make it so hard to understand that there was a God? I mean, why doesn't He just put a big picture up in the sky and there He is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping I don't get struck dead by saying that, but you know what I mean. It's like why, 
if this is the only the only way you're going to live in heaven is if you believe in something that's hard to believe in that doesn't sound fair that, you know that, well the that's a great question larry the, the first thing is that the the whole god concept and i and i believe in god i want to make that clear it's a beautiful thing to believe in but that doesn't mean i know god getting back to your opening comments which i thought were very intuitive so we, when you when you ask that a great question why, why, why didn't God just make it, uh, the system work so we could see, and it was very plain and very evident, who and what God is? That's because we didn't, I'm just say God didn't do that. We did that, and for many good reasons. But unfortunately, the uh, creation of a God concept, um, in, in as much as something out there exists that's greater than us, I, I do believe that, is is was, was a product a function of the human mind which is supposed to be a yearning poetic yes even anguished and certainly questioning entity the human mind that's why we have poetry um so you to start with that i mean this is something we came up with to help us cope with a world that is hard to understand do you think that there are too many people calling themselves uh, religious leaders because you've got people like um, Jesse Jackson and uh, other people that um, don't really have a church but they're going around professing that they know well I'm not going to speak to Jesse Jackson because I happen to know him and so I, but and he, you know but that's an interesting example of uh, the kind of person who creates an ethos of authority and uh, spiritual uh, judiciousness because of ego, because of circumstances in which uh, someone like that was involved, and he was involved and has been in some historic things. Mm -hmm. But I, I will say to this, I, 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 you know, I'm a Jew, but I'm extraordinarily uh, inclusive. I, I, I certainly hope, I couldn't have written this book without that, that we're all God's children. We're all just speaking different languages uh, to get to the same conclusion. But I, Jesus didn't have a, a building. <laughs> you know, Moses didn't have a building. Where, you know, people didn't come to, I mean, yes, the, Moses oversaw construction of a portable tabernacle in the desert for the Hebrews, which became the, the template of all churches, synagogues, and mosques. Yeah. But what goes yeah. on in the, in the Scripture takes place, that's the beauty of it, it takes place outdoors in mountains. Under under the sky, uh, yeah, and, and and it's not it's not enclosed, it's not housed in. Now, so we have to build buildings and to develop institutions to manage and to offer religiosity to people. But real spirituality is like the scripture; it's in the open. And so the irony is that the very scripture that people, that many religious leaders, yes, there are too many religious leaders who call themselves leaders. Oh, okay. Let, 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 yes, to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Let us, let us, the people who want to believe, let us define that somebody is inspiring us. I don't need them to tell me that they're going to inspire me. Let me make that decision. I'm not a robot. I'm a person. I am mortal. I've had experiences. I've buried people. I've been married. I've been divorced. My, my brother and I had an argument. Uh, I've lost jobs. I've held jobs. I don't need someone to tell me they're going to inspire me. If they do, I'll notify them. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, uh, yeah, that's yeah. good. I love this. But but if you but if you were laying down the law in with with good intent for for the children of your children of your children as, as Moses and or God did with the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. okay, we can say it was Moses. We can say it was God. It's, yeah, yeah, right. Moses is the one with them. So okay, so you would say, you know what? Don't kill and don't kill each other. Okay. The, the fact that that may have come from God, I mean, what? why do we even worry about that? That sounds like a pretty good message. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, don't well, be the, I'll, I'll try to uh, make an answer to that, and that is that the issue uh, of that remarkable story, that a man was so moved, a man in a position of leadership, was so moved to bring some laws of decency to a group of former slaves who didn't even know they were human beings, because they had been slaves all their lives, mm -hmm. and their parents, and their parents' parents, that's a beautiful idea. Uh, it's like you. I love that. Uh, but I don't have it. I don't have to know for sure that Moses actually climbed Mount Sinai and had this commiseration with the deity for forty days and forty nights, and he actually got these two tablets, and there it was God's fingerprint and so forth. That's a beautiful story. I'm not decrying it, but the the problem is when religious leaders teach that, they hold on and try to give themselves strength and uh, authenticity by saying, this is how it happened. I don't care how it happened. 
I don't care about the miracle. The miracle is a wonderful story. What I do care about is just what you said, that somebody came along inspired by a vision, inspired by his concept of God, to tell some uneducated, real needy folks, you know what? Yeah. They were, mm-hmm. they were killing each other in Egypt. They, they didn't even care about how they regarded their neighbor. They routinely uh, demonized and objectified women. We're going to be different than that. Yes. We're going to treat each other with civility and with care and with humanity. And not only that, other people are going to benefit from this message, and that's why we're, that's why we're the chosen people. I love that. And, so, and, 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 and It's not the miracle. It's the action. Uh, wow. Uh, and I when, when people are opposed to having the Ten Commandments, for example, on a public building, my comment is, well, what, which one of those commandments do you think is not a good one? You know, I mean, which one of those is not a good, I mean, whether you believe they came from God or, or not. I mean, if we, re, if we rephrase them into the, the 10 suggestions or something, <laughs> you know, and just reworded them and, and it wasn't specifically from God or, yeah. I mean, it's the same message. I do the same thing with, oh, yeah. with people when they talk about believing in Jesus. Mm-hmm. I will always say, well, what did he say that you don't agree with? Because to believe right. in me, if you believe in me, Rabbi... It means that you yeah. trust me in some way. You're gonna you're gonna go away for a vacation and then trust me with your dog. You believe in me. I'm not yeah. gonna I'm not gonna kill your dog while you're away. Exactly. Well, if somebody has a problem with or seeing those Ten Commandments up in a public place, that's the same kind of neurosis that the person on the other side, the authority, has when he or she says, "Because I've got these on my wall, that makes me more powerful than you." That's the problem with religion. Yes, I, exactly. I know that's you true a, too. You got, you got a tender message here. Who cares? That's true. You know what, what, what? What's the big deal? And then, by the way, they're all we're all saying the same thing. When you boil it down, every faith, what is working is saying, "Let us repair the world. Let us regard each other as God's creatures." We shouldn't be talking so much about God. God doesn't need our approval. He's in. Hmm. He's yeah. doing fine. Okay. We but, need to be inspired by <laughs> these by these stories to do godliness on this planet. I don't wow. know, I don't know what religion Hitler was supposedly <laughs> bowing down to when he decided to kill all those people in the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. But but I think the the notion that I'm better than you because of my beliefs is the same thing we're seeing with ISIS and it's the same thing we've seen hey if, if I mean throughout history with people just deciding yeah. that uh, okay it's good to cr- to commit genocide. It it's okay. Mm-hmm. Because in the name of God, we're going to do this. And as you just pointed out, there's no way that's in the name of God. Mm-mm. Well, but it's not in the name of God, but it's in the Bible. That's the irony. When people regard Scripture, they think it's the most perfect thing that's ever been put together. Well, it's not. It's highly flawed, and it's like leather. Leather is a beautiful thing. You can create wonderful things to wear, to have, to work with through leather. But the flaws in it prove that it was made by human beings. The, the Scripture was not written by God. The scripture was written by people inspired by God, and if we get that straight, we'll stop killing each other. Because if we believe it was, it was built by, written by God, then we can take the authority to kill people you know, in the name of some belief we have. We just do a transfer. So I love religion, I'm, I, and I love the scripture exactly yeah, because yeah. Do you know men, what? men and men and, men and women were inspired enough to write this kind of poetry. They sure were. There was a uh, the, 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 in the brilliant. in the. The Bible teaches us that Noah was spared because he was um, the the only righteous one God could see. And he spares not only Noah, but his whole family. Mm -hmm. But then later on, when the whole flood is done and he's sleeping in a tent naked, he curses his son for seeing him naked. It's like, that doesn't sound like a good man to me. (laughs) Wait a minute, wait a minute. You you must have read Cayman's new book. I don't know what to believe. (laughs) That's uh, that's a big story in there. That's exactly right. By the way, I just think about Noah... No, the Noah story is remarkable. It, that is perhaps the, the, the most uh, well-known story in the history of the world. But actually, it's interesting, if you look at the Scripture very carefully, it says Noah was chosen because he was the most righteous person in that time. Now, what kind of time was it? Everybody was killing everybody else. There wasn't a, it, it, there wasn't a trace of decency in the world, so much so that it broke the heart of God, that God had to literally flush out the world he had made, and start over again. So if Noah is the best dude in that period, this could have been the biggest putz you ever met because <laughs> compared to his compared to his time, he was better than an entire globe of criminals. Well, yeah. Death mm-hmm. systems. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta look at that's see that was written by a human being who's trying to teach us that everything is relative. But can you that imagine people going are, people, Can you yeah, imagine going go to bed naked in the tent and, mm-hmm. and the son you love comes in and sees you naked and you all of a sudden you hate him. I'm just yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, well, you know why I can imagine that? that? <laughs> because that's, it was, that's, that's within the realm of human nature. And when you regard the Bible, well, a series of incredibly powerful stories written and created by people who really were looking for the same thing you and I are looking for, some answers. And mm -hmm. you realize that, yeah, I mean, why do we, why do we look up the newspaper and see that same story every day or go, on, go online and not go, what, what is that? Well, how can that be? But it's, it's in the scripture. It, we, we, when we notice that, it's like a discrepancy. It's not a discrepancy. It's the report of a human being. Every American leader, almost without exception, who has changed our, our country in one way or the other, hopefully for the better, was also discovered to have had very significant flaws. They're people. Sure. We're doing the best we can. But there's We're not a person the that, that yeah, yeah. Well, and we, we, we blame a lot of things on Eve, too, because of that, that Apple thing. Oh, yeah, she started yeah. it all. I mean, we'd, we'd be all naked if we didn't have that. <laughs> when, when, when God says, oh, oh. Well, that story was written by a man. No question about that. That particular story was written by a man. <laughs> the, okay, so so they're naked and God sees them and they're and they're ashamed and and all of a sudden, so we we have clothing. I mean, mm -hmm. think about every creature God has ever made. None of them wore clothing except for us. Yeah. Well, look, God had a plan that we had to have malls eventually with clothing. So, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I don't know what uh, to believe now. <laughs> uh, how, how do you help the people have a good balance when you have different beliefs and uh, they get married and they're raising their children? Well, you, you listen very carefully and you tell them that you do believe that we're all God's children. This is America, for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. And we are succeeding in this country. I like that, in that expression. Sense. This is America, <laughs> for heaven's sake. Yes, yeah. And then we are succeeding uh, to be a true pluralistic society when we have enough respect for our respective faith and for each other's love to uh, to find a way to find a common language and get married. Getting marry somebody, marrying someone of another faith doesn't change your faith. It mm -hmm. just grows you as a person because you love somebody. And I must add that Moses who was a pretty successful Hebrew, pretty good career. And you know, a lot of the Jewish people in my community are very anxious about intermarriage, and I understand that because history has not been good to us and we don't want to lose our numbers. However, Moses, in the scripture, you can look it up, was married twice, just look it up. Mm -hmm. Both times intermarriages. The first time he was married to the love of his life, Zipporah, she was the daughter of the Midianite high priest. She was, as they would say, a pagan. And they had a wonderful marriage together, and he led the Hebrews uh, out of Egypt and became the icon, the world's first civil rights leader. Later, when, she, when he lost Zipporah in the desert, he remarried, and he married a black woman. It's in the Bible. You can look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the Bible points out that his brother and sister, Miriam and Aaron, were, were, were really upset and were, were racially indignant, and God punished them for being that way. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can't possibly honestly tell somebody that they shouldn't marry somebody that they truly love based on their faith. Faith you, should guide people to each other, not away from each other. Do you know, oh, we have had, wise. in Christianity, we've had people who I believe have hijacked the religion to make it not exactly mm -hmm. what what I think it is in Christianity. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had evangelists right. on TV who are clearly only after the money, you know, and we've, we've got Muslim friends, Robin and I, and, uh, and they have nothing to do with, with some of this stuff that's causing the terrorism. But yet we, we, as Americans, we seem to be connecting the two. Say, oh, that's Muslim, that's Muslim. They must be the same, of the same mind, but they're not at all. And, and those people, those ISIS people in that kind of mindset have hijacked that religion. Just, it's just as Hitler, uh, yeah. Hitler hijacked right. Christianity. I mean, Hitler was using Christianity to do mm -hmm. what he did. Well, because these kinds of folks in all the faiths, and, you know, I, I, my heart breaks for the Islamic people because uh, in your, that, that word you're using is exactly apropos, hijacking the faith. You know, Muhammad, from the 7th century, was the most inclusive leader of all the great religious faiths because when he created, not alone, but he inspired the creation of Islam, he actually made it very clear that it was predicated on the belief that Judaism and Christianity, which preceded Islam, were both true, and Islam was a continuance of it. How ironic that those people in, uh, in that great faith who have turned it to terrorism, or a segment of it, I should be, I should be clear, uh, have completely perverted the message of Muhammad himself. There's a great story in the Quran, and I quote stories from, from all the scriptural documents in this book, I don't know what to believe, 
that Muhammad uh, was uh, with, with a friend and standing by in a funeral procession went by. This is in the Quranic tradition. This is in the Islamic literature. And he stood up when the casket went by, and his friend said to him, why are you standing up? That man who died was a Jew. And Muhammad says to him, wasn't he a person? Oh. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, I mean, that's in the... That's in the so I, I, so I, don't tell me wow. that the, those yeah. mad ISIS represent anything other than murdering yeah. uh, despotic yeah. hijackers, as you say, of a, of a very fine face. And at the same time, shouldn't the people who used to be called indig indigenous Americans, in other words, the people we called Native Americans or yes, Indians, exactly. I mean, shouldn't they be ticked off at, at most of Christianity because that's what was hijacking their land, not just their, their religion. And they committed genocide well, against the Native yeah. Americans. Well, uh, so, yeah, obviously, yeah. So I don't know but what I to think believe. that was, that, that was, you know, I think it all comes down to insecurity. I think a lot of men and some women need to feel that they're larger than they feel that they are by and making it, somebody else smaller. And every and atheist, religion. every atheist who listens in on this conversation says, see, I told you, I've been telling you this all along. Yeah. I've been telling you this all along. What, what was John Lennon said? I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in Krishna. I don't believe. He went through the whole list. Mm -hmm. He said, I just believe in me, me and Yoko. I don't know if you remember that song, but. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't. Yeah. You got to believe well, in something. Well, I think something. he was disillusioned with what the face were bringing upon. I mean, I think that's where he was, uh, where he was going. I mean, he was disappointed in, in them. And he didn't. He, and so tragically, he was, he was cut down at the age of 40, long before the, the, the madness of the 21st century when the extreme, of course, being uh, the jihadists, but we have Christian evangelism, which minimizes everybody else. And believe me, in my faith community, there's a 15% of our, our demographic who are, I call them crazy Torah Jews, who believe that uh, every Palestinian should be thrown out of uh, their, you know, where, where they live, and that every, every inch of land in, in what was used to be called Palestine, yeah. the British were there, is def is defined by something that happened four thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Both 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 sides are crazy because the extremists <laughs> yeah. on both sides. Oh yes. Are, are, uh, you'll forgive me, but they're screwing the scripture. I got in they're trouble for giving... saying that same thing one time <laughs> by listeners who who were adamantly opposed to that mm -hmm. opinion. Um, but I did. I had some nasty phone calls. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I happen to be from, I'm, I'm from Israel originally. I was nine years old when we came to the States, and I'm there a lot. My daughter lives there now, my brother. And I, 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 for decades, I've, I've sat with and talked with Israelis and Palestinians. And you know what? They don't talk about scripture. They talk about how to get along together. They just want their kids to be able to go to school, go to a movie in the evening, and find a way. Again, it's re re religious demagogues who have fueled the flames of that. But that doesn't mean that religion or spirituality are wrong. It's the people who are responsible for it who should be thrown out. Makes They've lost different. any contact with the real message of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. The scripture actually is about tenderness. And if, and it if, really is. And if, and if the real messages of these people we hold up as religious icons, like Moses or Jesus or Muhammad, if we hold them up, or Buddha, mm -hmm. or, or any of the, the other yes. religions' um, main people, I mean, if their basic message is being perverted by those who want to use it for some reason, then then of course we should say, "Come on, get you know, come to your senses." This is 2016. You can see through it all. You can see through a phony. Uh, well, I think we, we've been we've all been numb by our iPhones, uh, but the, but there are a lot of good people out there who are looking for a place to alight, and it is okay. And this is what I'm trying to convey in this book. It's okay to be selective in what is meaningful to you in the scripture because you are meant to think. Religion should not teach you what to think. It should teach you to think. Gosh. Religion is law, but spirituality is love. And you've got to find a balance between the two. And sadly, in my community, in the synagogues, in many Christian churches, and, and in, in many mosques, the people who are standing up and talking have lost touch with the fact hmm. that this is meant to be poetry, not polemics. It's about love. Well, we had a, we had a, a lunch one time with a, a great rabbi in our community, um, mm -hmm. and we were talking about this one time, and I, I know we've almost out of time, but the bottom line is, you know what? You believe we should treat each other with respect, and so do we. That's the bottom line, isn't it? Yes. Um, I don't know what to believe is the title of the book. Rabbi Ben this. came, and what a, what a stimulating conversation. Thank you for being on Thank the air. You. Do you have a website? Yes, I do. It's very simple. It's BenKamen.com, B as in boy, E-N, 
K-A-M as in Michael, I-N, like in Nancy, Ec- BenKamen.com. Excellent. Thank All you. All my s- books are available. This is Pleasure. W-O-C-A Ocala. We'll be right back. Marco Rubio trying to get some traction in the GOP presidential race, winning the Puerto Rico primary, as candidates look ahead to next week's winner-take-all primary in Rubio's home state of Florida. Donald Trump is way ahead in the Sunshine State, and has been calling on Rubio the dropout. Trump lost Maine to Ted Cruz, but brushed off the defeat on Fox and Friends. Did okay up there, but I, you know, I only went there for a brief period of time. The voters go to the polls in four states tomorrow. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. For Democrats, the Michigan primaries tomorrow. Bernie Sanders won yesterday's Maine caucuses. Peyton Manning makes it official today, announcing his retirement after 18 years in the NFL. Broncos safety David Bruton. You know, when he would get up there and speak, he always started it off with, you know, a, a good amount of jokes, but we knew that what Peyton was was all about business. Manning, a two-time Super Bowl winner, the only quarterback to win it on two different teams. Fox News. We report, you decide. When it comes to commercial vehicles, it's time to drill down to the details. If you're not driving the new...